so from the series uh, we have got the data where the data is for series x as well as series y both the series are present so firstly they have given us number of observations that is nothing but n that is 15 and 15 for both the series then we have arithmetic mean so this is the actual mean that we have so this is going to be x bar and this will be y bar next standard deviation is given so standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y then sum of squares of deviation from mean i already told you have to read this reversely so deviation from mean deviation from mean means x minus x bar so if we uh, if you remember x minus x bar we denote it by small x okay we denote it by small x so this is deviation from mean and square of the deviation deviation from mean square of the deviation then sum of square of deviation sum means sigma square of deviation so sigma x square sigma x square is 135 and similarly sigma y square is 138 next after that the last one summation of product of deviation of x and y series from their respective means again read it once again deviation of x and y series from their respective mean which means x minus x bar y minus y bar what is x minus x bar small x y minus y bar is small y okay product of deviation product means multiplication so x into y correct so that is multiplication product summation of product of deviation summation of product of deviations these are deviations that is small x and small y are deviations so summation of product of deviations of x and y from their respective means respective means is x bar and y bar okay so sigma xy which is given to us is 122 okay now we have all the information let us solve this now there are two ways that you can solve this problem first way is this formula sigma xy divided by n into standard deviation of x into standard deviation of y okay you can use this formula and solve the problem so here you know what is sigma xy that is nothing but 122 divided by what is n n is 15 for both of them and standard deviation is 20 oh, sorry 3.01 for x and 3.03 for y if you simplify this you will get 0.8917 okay you get 0.8917 so this is one formula there is one more formula that is sigma xy divided by square root of summation x square into y square this is also we have all the data in this also so 122 divided by square root of sigma x square is 135 sigma y square is 138 okay so 122 divided by first do the multiplication and then then do the square root so 122 divided by 136.49 again you get 0.8938 there's only point difference here because first 89 is same after that only you have the difference so that is fine so these uh, in such type of problems where they give you data you can use the formulas this like this understood did you all understand
okay now we have got the value 0.8938 for this also we have to do the analysis on to the timeline first semi is this positive or negative correlation is this positive or negative correlation positive correlation yes good so i have 0.25 and 0.75 now this 0.89338 will come in which place will it come in low moderate or high low is 0 to 0.25 moderate is 0.25 to 0.75 and high is 0.75 to 1 everybody has to answer low moderate or high where does this value get placed 0.89 will it come after 0.75 after 0.75 only 0.89 will come right so this is going to be in the high degree positive correlation between the variables what are the two variables it is going to be series x and series y yes so you are supposed to understand and analyze in which place will it come in low will it come in low medium or high uh, data that you only have to recognize and write the conclusion okay so these are the problems where you will be calculating correlation coefficient by using actual mean by using assumed mean and directly using the data okay and that that was the three types of problems which we solved under correlation coefficient here this is carl pearson's correlation coefficient any doubts until here okay now let us see few of the theory points of carl pearson's coefficient of correlation first are assumptions what are the assumptions that uh, carl pearson took when he was uh, coming up with this uh, correlation coefficient firstly pearson's correlation coefficient is based on following assumption normal distribution each of the variables are being affected by a large number of independent causes so as to produce normal distribution now how come it is called normal distribution is the analysis line that we take okay the analysis line that we take is nothing but a normal distribution normal distribution means it is equally distributed if i take zero here it is equally distributed on both the sides okay and if there is a little change in the values it is largely affected so the variables are affected by a large number and it will produce a normal distribution and there is an equal distance between when we take the timeline there is a equal distance from 0 to plus 1 and from 0 to minus 1 so this is what we have to understand so that is a normal distribution this is the first assumption that has been made by carl pearson to derive the coefficient of correlation next the relationship is linear 
which means if you plot all the values on a graph that x and y values whatever you do no all that if you plot it on a graph you will get a straight line the straight line might be like this like this or like this doesn't matter but you will get a straight line okay so that is why it is called as relationship is linear so that is one of the assumption then re related to casual fashion there is a cause and effect relationship between the forces affecting the distribution of the items of two series if not that is if variables are independent there cannot be any correlation okay so what they are trying to say is there is a cause and effect uh, due to age the students or uh, the children playing percentage came down so if you remember yesterday's uh, uh, problem that which we solved if you see here see in a small age there were more number of students who were interested to play but as and when they grew up the number of players got reduced so there is a cause and the effect of that what is the cause age is the cause and there is a effect of that in the playing now let us take another example now if you see here cost and sales cause effect cause is cost if the cost is less sales will be high what is the effect sales is the effect okay if cost is high sales will be low or sometimes both can increase both can decrease okay so that is how you will be able to do the cause and effect so there is a cause and effect relationship between the factors if there is no cause and effect relationship then it means there is no correlation there is no relationship between the variables at all if there is no relationship between the variables every variable will become independent which means they can do the work on their own they do not want to depend on the other factor for the work to be done okay it is something like illogical series the relationship between illogical series series of height now just think is there any relation between the height of a person and the income of a person can you say people who are tall can earn more money or can we say people who are short cannot earn money at all that is not related anyways so those are illogical so and if and these two height height of a person and income of a person is an individual independent factor okay it is a separate factor you cannot uh, you know actually compare both of them because they are illogical it's not logically correct and similarly there is one more example given size of the shoes and intelligence of a person so if you say uh, a person who has small uh, foot uh, will have less intelligence it doesn't make sense it's illogical so if it is a logical uh, relationship it will have cause and effect which means there is correlation which is present okay because of uh, let's say be because of uh, too much of uh, or let's say you can put it like this it was too hot in the morning because of which it rained in the evening so to if when it was too sunny in the morning which means the evaporation process happens the clouds are formed and evening you will get rain that is the bio system rule so there is a cause and an effect understood so that is the that these are the three assumptions that we can see in the carl pearson's coefficient of correlation what are that first is normal distribution from uh, if you uh, remember the timeline so it, the data is equally distributed a little change in one place of the data will change uh, 
the result in a large way then the relationship is linear the if you plot the numbers on a graph you will get a straight line and related in a casual fa fashion there should be a cause and effect for the relationship for the correlation to be present if everything becomes uh, independent then it will become a illogical series understood the assumptions that can be a 2 marks question sometimes that can be a 6 marks question also any doubts in the assumptions okay so let us move on further let us see what are the merits and demerits of carl pearson's correlation coefficient now here first pearson's correlation coefficient is based on all observation okay we don't consider only first and last value or we don't consider only the central value we uh, consider all the data and do the calculation if you are finding deviations you find deviations for all the data of x and all the data of y correct so we uh, it is based on all the observations then it is most popular and practical method than other methods of calculating correlation coefficient this carl pearson's correlation coefficient is used is practically used in the manufacturing industries they are practically used in doing research r and d research and development okay to find relationship between any two factors in the manufacturing sector it is usually used okay now how do you understand uh, you know um, to improve the sale what are the factors to improve the sale of the product okay so i am i'm, I'm going to do a correlation study here so i will take few factors i will say less cost good quality so let us take an example of a research project or something here so i that will help you to understand now let's say there's a two wheeler there is two wheeler sale now diwali is coming right deepavali so uh, two wheeler will uh, two wheelers will have lot of offers on sale of two wheelers so i am doing a correlation study on i am doing a correlation study here on few factors out of that two major factors that i have taken is cost of the two wheeler to the features or uh, let's say yeah i'll take the features of the two wheeler or in specifically i will say looks of the two wheeler now when i find the correlation between the cost of the two wheeler and the looks of it i will arrive at some correlation coefficient data so which will say me the correlation coefficient will say me okay so if if it is a high degree of positive correlation it means all the cost that i am paying is majorly for the looks of the bike now why does many of you uh, buy that big big bikes that uh, you know ktm and yamaha bikes and all the sports by you know what is that called i don't even know their name exactly okay so the bikes which uh, you guys use for racing racing bikes or for the long drives why do you majorly buy firstly you like it secondly you like the feel of the bike right thirdly for the looks looks is also one of the matter where you go and buy them correct so these are the factors where i can do the study by using correlation so if i get high degree correlation it means that i have maximum of my uh, you know amount that i have paid for my bike is only because for the looks clear so like this i can find lot of relation uh, correlation between uh, demand and supply of a product that also can be done 
uh, correlation between uh, lockdowns and spread of coronavirus you have to do that study now many many scientists are doing it does really lockdown help people uh, you know not spreading the virus there are a lot of research which has come up that is how doctors do a lot of research and they would uh, try to uh, actually come up with a lot of precautionary measures and vaccines i don't know when the vaccine is going to come though okay so the, that is the second merit it's a most popular and practical method then this method measures both degree and direction of correlation so it will say it if it is in the high degree moderate degree or low degree which means is high degree means it is completely related it is directly and completely related because of the looks only you are buying the bike that is what it means for high degree moderate degree it means that okay looks are also part of the criteria you want to buy a mobile let's say you want to buy a iphone there is some new model of iphone which has come now so you want to buy a iphone now when i say there is high degree of positive correlation which means you want to buy that phone just because of the looks or just because the phone is working very very good or the battery life is very good there is one feature which is fixed up where you are like yes because of this only i want to buy but when it comes to moderate degree you think you compare two three factors and you say okay these are all the factors i don't say only one specifically but i have more than one factors which will help me decide when it comes to low degree that looks of the phone or looks of the bike is not very prominent that is just part of the list or part of the criteria so this correlation is going to give us the degree and the direction direction means is it positively correlated or negatively correlated now what is positively correlated if one factor increases the other factor also increases now if the cost increases for a bike the look wise they would have added some new components they would have added a, a good um, you know quality of paint you get that rust free paint and all that right some some um, sketch draw some very creative look they would have given that is positive if one increases the other increases on the contrary if it is negative correlation which means if one decreases the other will increase okay few times you can see few products you to look it will not be very good or the uh, you know the way it works is not very good but the price will be very high right so such products comes under negative correlation so that is the third merit it will understand it will make us understand both the degree and the direction of the correlation between the variables it will help us do lot of comparison now we compared lot of products here fuel let's say fuel or mileage mileage of two wheeler then it is amenable to further algebraic treatment now taking this r value i can still go go on and do more calculations we will be doing that in the next concept okay so keeping in mind the r value that is correlation coefficient we will be doing more and more uh, application of it in the further problems or in any situation when it is required okay so this or these five points are the merits of carl pearson's coefficient uh, correlation coefficient any doubts in the merits okay now coming to the d merits of carl pearson's correlation coefficient we saw the merits so we also have to just go through the d merits 
it is based on the assumption that the linear relationship between variables without verifying it is correct or not so it has a assumption saying uh, when you plot the values on the graph you are going to get a straight line right so that is linear relationship now nobody has verified that saying okay it is linear will it come in straight line uh, standing line sleeping line nobody knows just it's an assumption which everybody does so that is one of a demerit because there is uncertainty you do not know if it is correct or not next this method is comparatively more time consuming why it is more time consuming you have to first analyze the problem check if you can uh, you know solve it using actual mean if you are getting fractions then you have to do the deviation method that is assume a mean and then find the deviations square them find the product then put the formula and then do the analysis there are too many steps which are involved so it is time consuming okay and here it says sometimes it is affected by the extreme values if you have the highest value in the problem or the lowest value in the problem then it gets affected so these are the three demerits of carl pearson's correlation coefficient even after this, uh, these demerits carl pearson's coefficient is the best and the practical popular method which is used on in a daily life okay now you you would have heard about uh, data analyst right data analyst people um, all of them use this majority of the correlation coefficient and your production machinery if you see in a uh, we we happen to visit the tvs showroom uh, sorry the plant right in the tvs plant if uh, the machines which you saw there how it was manufacturing it was bending the sheets um, you know it was painting the machines were doing the robots were doing the work by itself so the robots will be fed using such correlation equations correlation and regression equations these are basics which everybody has to know so clear with the uh, merits and demerits any doubts okay now let us go for the next concept that is probable error now probable error is a statistical tool which is used to measure the reliability of the value of pearson's correlation coefficient in so far as it depends upon the condition of random sampling so we're going to uh, understand uh, and find out using that r correlation coefficient we are going to find out to what extent this answer is correct to what extent can i trust the answer okay to what extent should you listen to a person and trust him that depends on your perception and your decision similarly how much can i depend upon that correlation coefficient using pearson for formula okay so that i am going to test using probable error let us understand the definitions of probable error the probable error of r r is correlation coefficient is an amount which if added to and subtracted from the average correlation coefficient produces amounts within which the chances are even that a coefficient of correlation from the series selected at random will fall okay too complicated to understand what they are trying to say is this r calculation whatever we do okay so the probable error i will find probable error of that r that is correlation coefficient and if i add or subtract that to the value then it will create a different value which will help me to understand 
is it reliable is it trustable or not okay that is one of the definition one more definition by weldon probable error defines the limit above and below the size of coefficient determined within which there is an equal chance that the coefficient of correlation similarly calculated from other samples will fall so here weldon is saying that probable error is it is something like it will define should i go above or below a little variation also if i get what will be the result of the data that is present in the problem i think we will understand this better when we go to the problems so let's quickly uh, go on to the problems so here you have the formula for probable error this 0.6745 is a constant this number will not change any time so it is a constant and then you have 1 minus r square by square root of n so what is this r is nothing but correlation coefficient n is the number of pairs of variables okay so let us check now coming to the first problem if r is equal to 0.6 what is r who can say me what is r what is r what does r denote small r don't say me the value say me the what does it denote nobody knows all this while we have solved lot of problems of calculating r what were we calculating pearson's hmm pearson's correlation come on i'm giving you the hint you are supposed to answer and once we know carl pearson's correlation coefficient then we have n n is nothing but the number of pairs of data that is available here directly they will give you don't you need not have to find all that what is the question find probable error or the coefficient of correlation sorry probable error of the coefficient of correlation and determine the limits for population if you just wait a minute uh, population correlation coefficient so we will write down the formula first what is the formula 0.6745 this is a constant into 1 minus r square by square root of n so 0.6745 into 1 minus r square is 0.6 whole square whole divided by square root of n is 64 simplify this 0.6745 into 1 minus 0.6 square is 0.36 correct 6 is a 36 here it is point so 0.36 then 64 square root of 64 is 8 Eight eight zero sixty four. Okay. Now further simplification: zero point six seven four five into zero point six four by eight. So zero point six seven four five into zero point zero eight, and the probable error that we have here is zero point zero five three nine six. So understood what uh, how to calculate PE? That is probable error. you just have to apply the formula here they will give you the data of r as well as n so you just have to apply that and find out the pe probable error understood
okay now once you find out the probable error we should also find the limits now what is this limits it is something like the range that we give so we will say uh, you have to score between 70 to 85 so 70 is the lower limit 